Who wants to live below their means? I want to live the best life I can possibly live. So I talk about this often. I use liability. I, if I want to buy a new Ferrari, I first buy an asset, and the asset pays for the Ferrari. I, I wanted a Rolls Royce. Why? Because I never had a Rolls Royce. I've had Bentleys. So I built an asset, and the asset then bought my Rolls Royce. Now I'm kind of bored with cars. So I don't have a guilty thing, is that I have financial education, which is what the Rich Dad Company teaches. In this video, Robert reveals the secrets to achieving financial freedom and living an extraordinary life. Discover how he buys luxury cars like Ferraris and Rolls Royces without guilt by leveraging assets. Learn why traditional education keeps you poor and how you can break free from the paycheck to paycheck cycle. Explore the powerful cash flow quadrant and see why real estate is the ultimate wealth building tool. Robert shares his personal journey from shyness to confidence, emphasizing the critical skills you need to succeed. If you're ready to escape mediocrity and unlock the keys to massive wealth, this video is a must watch. And you can have the same thing too. You just have to stop listening to those school teachers who are poor. You know, most school, school teachers like my poor dad, very good, good people, but they're so terrified of making mistakes. They want, they want a steady paycheck and they want a guaranteed pension. I don't think you can get rich from that point of view. Look at this chart here. It's called the cash flow quadrant. E and S, employee and self-employed. That was my poor dad. You know, they, these guys work for money. These guys are not capitalists. They work for money and they invest their own money. On the B and the I side is my rich dad side. That's the capitalist side. Capitalists use other people's labor and other people's money to get rich. Which side do you want to be on? I'd rather be on the capitalist side. So that's the only difference. It's a whole shift of mindset and education, but everybody can do it if you want to do it. Real estate is a very important asset class. So a lot of people think, well, I have stocks, I have bonds, I have mutual funds, but well, they're just assets. And But real estate is, to me, the single most important asset class to study, especially today, since I just was watching CNBC, you know, Bubble Vision, and they finally acknowledge that Zillow has a 7,000 property problem because they flip property. And naturally, I tax, and I don't flip property. I, I hold property forever. I collect rent forever, and I pay no taxes. So if you like paying taxes, then, you know, don't invest in real estate. If you like paying taxes, have a 401k, biggest ripoff I've ever seen. But so that's why real estate as an asset class in the macro picture globally is the single most important subject, but also the most complex. And the reason it's complex is you if you buy, let's say, Apple stock and you make a mistake, you say you buy Apple at 10, where's this, what's it, Tesla at a thousand bucks or something. You buy Tesla at a thousand bucks and it starts to crash, you can get out tonight. You can yes. get out immediately. But you buy a piece of real estate, you can't get out. So in financial literacy, which most school teachers have no idea what that means, the word is called liquidity. And the reason real estate needs to be studied more than any other subject, other than entrepreneurship, is liquidity. You start a business, you can't get out if you make a mistake. Yeah. You buy a piece of real estate, you can't get out. So the basic skill on this side, according to my rich dad, was you have to sell. Mm -hmm. You cannot be an entrepreneur if you cannot sell. Yeah. And that scared the crap out of me because, um, you know, I'm Japanese. I'm really, I'm really a shy person. Mm -hmm. And my rich dad looked at me and he says, you're shy, huh? Big deal. What are you going to do about it? Hmm. I said, well, you know, I just don't, you know, I just, I just like, don't like rejection. I don't like this. And I don't like that. And you know, I could kill people, but I couldn't talk to them. <laughs> mm -hmm. So my rich dad's pressuring me. He says, I said, I don't want to sell because of my poor dad's side, you know, the Japanese side. Salesmen are scum, salesmen are crooks, salesmen are con men. And on this side, sales, you have to have the ability to sell. Can you handle rejection? Mm -hmm. Can you somebody say no to you and can you come back? And I didn't want to do that. I'm a very shy person. So he says that shyness is killing you. One of the biggest mistakes, I still hear it today from young people. Oh, I don't have to worry because I'm still young. Yeah, and that is death to most people because eventually you get old and then you're not young again. 
So it's a way of saying, when I talk about assets and liabilities, one of the most important things you have in your life is time. It's one of your greatest assets or it's your liability. And being, you know, I just turned 70, and I have friends who have nothing. I mean, they have zero. Now they made, they've made a lot of money, but they have nothing here. They have nice houses, nice cars, 16 wives, 19 kids, I don't know what they have, but you know what I mean? And, and being young is great, except it can be a liability to you. Because when you're young, you're just having a lot of fun and life's exciting, you know, it's new. So, as a time, but the thing is, this is the lesson today, is so many people spend their time focusing here. They wanna make a lot of money. And I can hear it in their words. They say, oh, I want a career. This is career. Okay, or I'm gonna start my own business and this is the chart here, which we've seen. This is the cash flow quadrant, book number two. E is employee, S is small business, self-employed or a specialist, like a doctor, a lawyer, or a web, web designer. B is big business, 500 employees or more, and I is professional investor. So. When I was your age, I knew I wanted to get here. This takes time. This is the hardest, you know. This is where the big mega bucks are, and Kim and I are here, and the money is massive, but it takes time to get there. The big mistake I see young people make is they focus here, and the words are, I want to do what I love. That's the track. You see, in real life, sometimes you have to do what you hate. Like, people think I like to write books. I hate writing books. But it fills my purpose in life. It's not my passion, my purpose in life. Because my purpose was to get here. A lot of these guys get trapped here doing what they love. And as we've talked about on earlier episodes of this thing, these guys pay the highest taxes. 40% here, 60% in taxes here. 20% here, and then 0% here. So when I was in my, before my 20s, I knew I wanted to go there, and I wasn't doing what I loved. I had to learn what I didn't want to learn. I had sometimes had to do what I hated. I had to learn about taxes. I had to learn about debt. I had to take classes. I had to learn about insurance. So I was doing a lot of things I hated doing so I could come over here. These guys never do this because they, they live their passion. I want my passion. The difference in passion is greedy, purpose is for other people. So my purpose was to come over here so I could serve more people. Okay. So I have employees here and all this. I don't buy stocks, bonds, mutual funds because as a professional investor I can create my own assets. Most people go to school to become employees, it stands for E, employee. Or they become specialists, like social media guys. But where a rich dad is different is that this is what you go to school for, you become doctors or lawyers or accountants or pizza shop owners. But this is the B and the I side, this is big business and this is a professional investor. Not stocks, not mutual funds, not ETFs, not 401ks, not that stuff professional investor. So the problem with most millennials, they went to school and they came out here, right? That's correct, yeah. That's the problem. What Rich Dad does was shift you to think on this side. So the B and the I side, 500 employees or more, professional investor, you want 401ks and stuff that's on this side. But you have the power with this thing to go over here. So my whole message is this, and these are all from my Rich Dad, this is called the BI triangle, B and I. To be a big business owner and investor, there's eight steps to it. Number one, you have to have a mission statement for your company. Number two, you gotta have a team. Number three, you have to have leadership. And now then you have product. Everybody says, oh, I got a great product. Well, product is the least important thing. Then you have to have legal. You know, you have to patent all those contracts. Systems. 
You know, a car, automobile is a system of systems. A computer is a system of systems. The human body is a system of systems. That's why they have a good team. You have the communication. This is the most powerful communication device ever. You know, but most people use it to text and complain. <laughs> yeah, and check their social media accounts. Yeah, and... I mean, grow up, you guys. <laughs> and then here we have cash flow. You know, cash is either flowing in or flowing out. And this is leadership. So Shane is over here on the leadership side. He coordinates all these people with this thing. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yep. So you have the most powerful tool in history. The lesson is here, you gotta choose your teachers wisely. When the market crashed in 2008, guess how much money I borrowed? A lot. 300 million. No way. From what? private investors, the bank, or how does, that, how does that work? Because interest rates were dropping and real estate prices were going to the toilet. And when I walk into my banker, this is what Rich Dad Poor Dad is about. Rich Dad Poor Dad is about a financial statement. Mm -hmm. Income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flow. It's a book on accounting. People don't even know it's a book on accounting. So I walked into my bank with my partner and had all this property that was floating to the surface. And I say, I'll take them off your hands. I just give me, give me the money to buy the property. Wow. That's cojones. 300 million. Give me the money and I'll buy your properties for you. <laughs> That's crazy. So it depends, and this is my whole thing. I am now, 700 million, almost a billion in debt. Really? You know why? Because I don't pay any taxes. The more debt I have, the less tax I pay. And the average guy goes, how do you do that? Because you have bad teachers. And so it's this whole thing that you got to choose your teachers wisely. Mm -hmm. That's why I wrote the book, Fake. Fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. I don't touch that garbage that Wall Street puts out. I don't have a 401k. I don't have stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. Doesn't mean you shouldn't, but I don't need them. Okay? Right. right. And the other part is, look, for young guys, the best teachers are not in colleges. The best teachers are on YouTube. The mm -hmm. best teachers are on YouTube. Wake up.